Welcome to Mystic Portal Emporium. Today, we're going to start our first episode of breaking down our groupings. I know a lot of people have been asking to go over them in more detail, especially one consistent commenter. You know who you are. Uh, today, we're going to cover marshals. And first off, I'd like to actually break down so you can always refer to this video on what groupings are to classes. Groupings are to classes... Uh, basically a collection of everything that any class that is counted within this grouping, and since it's marshals, this will be our combatant, our uh, warrior, the marshalist, the archer, uh, the marksman, as well as the missileer. All six of these classes have their own benefits and special features, but there is a series of things that all of them will have access to. Now, within this section, you will have what's called grouping abilities and ability die. And you will notice at the top of the grouping, it will explain what your starting um, die type is, as well as how many you get. And below that, it will show you uh, the level progression of when the die upgrades to a higher die, as well as when the number of dice you have goes up. So these will be used to actually fund the various abilities. But let's get into the features. So for Marshals, we have five of them. Second Wind, and for 5e players, you might recognize this, but it's a totally different aspect of how to utilize it. With Second Wind, a limited number of times a day, which does increase with character level, you can roll an ability die and gain that amount of stamina back. This is so that you can kind of, you know, switch around and juggle. You also have an ability called Resolve that allows you to do it in reverse, where you trade a... Stamina points to gain an ability die back. This is to allow the marshals to juggle between these two types of resources. Now keep in mind, groupings are a part of expert rules. And this is due to the fact that there is a lot that you're adding on. It's almost like having a second class just built on and leveling up with your core class. So do keep in mind that this is extra stuff to add and it's more to keep up with. But it adds so much to the game. So let's get to the other ones. Physical Adept. This will be what gives you your extra movement as well as better initiative. Marshals and half marshals in our system, which half marshals in our system are part of dual groupings. I'll end up going over that as the last video in this section. But for now, let's just call them half marshals. So for both of these, they will have improved initiative. Uh, for instance, if you are a marshal, you don't roll initiative. You go first if you're the only marshal, as well as if there are other marshals, you only roll a die if you have a matching modifier for um, your initiative bonus. So you will be going in the order of that modifier or rolling a die, and whoever has the highest to lowest is the order within that bracket. For half marshals, they will roll initiative with advantage. This is to consistently give marshals that immediate response and quick action in combat that marshals throughout history are known for. Now, on to the fourth one with muscle memory. You've heard me speak in the D&D failed videos on marshals that we have something called reactions. These reactions aren't like holding an action in D&D. That would be just saving an action for later. You are not sacrificing any of your turn to be able to use a reaction outside of your turn. Now, where most groupings start with one, marshals start with more. This is the build to allow them to have extra movement, counterattacks, and various other things that they're able to do. These are almost a secondary resource for actions in and out of combat, and later on I'll end up going over reactions and how they can be triggered, and from what all things can trigger them, and what all options you have with a reaction. The last feature for um, marshals is final round. As long as you have one stamina and one vitality, you can trade them interspersibly. This is kind of like in movies where you see the marshal getting their butt beat. And they're bleeding and then all of a sudden they get that extra motivation to stand up. They're more tired than they were, but they have health to continue. This is to facilitate that fantasy. Where some of you may think this isn't realistic, we are also trying to make a fantasy game. So do keep in mind that commenters that keep bringing up the fact this is a game with dragons or magic. Because, duh. But who wants to have a game where marshals can't compete? Now for the abilities, they have 10. Amongst all groupings, 
these have the most abilities. Now, as I said before, you will roll ability die with a certain set of rules or just use them, which is referred to in our system as spending an ability die. Certain things will tell you that you it is not spent. Pay very close attention because that's very important for you. So one of the first ones is counterattack, and that's pretty obvious. You get what that is. Um, but to give a little detail, you actually have as a marshal a counterattack range, which generically starts as five below your dodge rating. So if they hit five or less than your dodge rating, you can spend an ability die to use the counterattack option, which allows you to attempt to hit them and do damage outside of your turn. Extra reaction, you can just spend an ability die. And you don't have to roll it, you just get to use an extra reaction. So as long as it's in a moment that you could use a reaction, you can spend it and therefore follow through with that action. Follow through strike. I forget the name of the feature in 3rd edition, and I believe it carried into 5th. I'm not exactly sure. Feats weren't exactly a priority of the 5e system. But what happened is, if you were to attack someone and drop them to zero, and you had remaining damage that could have been dealt, and there's another target with an attack range of where you already are, you can spend ability die to be able to transfer that damage across to them. Empowering Strike, it makes you take a little more time, starting off at a second to your attack, but in the end, it does add more damage, so it's like charging up that strike to hit them with it. When it comes to uh, Disarm, it's pretty simple. You're spending an ability die to have a chance to roll against them with disadvantage to be able to disarm them, and Disarm in our system is not as friendly and easy to deal with as it is in 5e. Charging Strike. Charging Strike allows you to spend an ability die to be able to rush in combat at least six feet. You have to be running for at least six feet, not to jog, which is our basic movement. You have to be running. And if you run, you are spending stamina to accomplish this past certain distances. But as long as you are doing it for six feet, you will be able to spend an ability die and do a Charging Strike, adding excess damage and potentially a knockback effect. For Prepared Clash, you will intentionally take a weakened strike. This will be dealt with as concussive damage, which affects your stamina, over actual any type of melee damage. Now, this is to allow you to get into a prepared, like you were in a locked-in situation, like someone swings the sword and you kind of brace with the impact. You can turn the sword and grapple them. You can use this clash to rotate them to the side and get behind them. And like a samurai can do, they can block the sword and come back and move around and now you are behind them. So this gives you multitudes of options, including the grappling, as I said. And with certain weapons, like a European sword, as I was demonstrating, preferably like a long sword, arming sword, or bastard sword, you will be able to use its level up, uh, sorry, training level features to be able to grapple them with your weapon instead of having to do it with your hands after putting your weapon aside. Now, on to targeted strike. You will do, again, a disadvantage strike because this is a much harder thing. You're not just trying to hit them center of mass. You are specifically targeting them. Now, for the different damage types that melee weapons and unarmed can do, this each will have a crit effect specifically applied to it. So this allows you to put a different type of condition or status effect based off of the damage type by targeting a specific part of your opponent. The block parry range. Now, normally, for all classes, this is just known as the glancing shot range, which means directly on your dodge rating. Now, if you have a shield, well, this will turn it into a block parry range and can extend that. So now, from your direct dodge rating up a few points, could now be your entire block parry range. If someone strikes within that range, this now allows you to either block and put them in a wide open stance, which is a condition. It has its own effects on your character, and if you check out the playtest core document, you will actually be able to read each one of these conditions and see why our system does not play around with being able to add these in. And on the parry, this sets up a lot of attacks, specifically with like the combatant over the warrior, considering the combatant is more about making you bleed and precision strikes, where the warrior is more about big weapons that are gonna break and 
knock you down, as well as do durability damage more consistently and focus a lot more on concussive damage. And for the final one, Desperation Strike. Look, I'm a fan of Borderlands. So if you hit zero HP and someone is within your distance, you can have a disadvantage strike to attack them. And if you succeed, you were able to roll an ability die and gain a minimal amount of health back. Now, granted, in later levels, your ability die becomes a D20 and not the D4, D6 area that you start with. So this can be slightly significant with considering that can be upwards of 10% of your health for the larger, more beefier builds. But at the same time, I know it's not realistic, but it's fun. So that will do it for the uh, martial grouping. If any of you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below. Ask me if you want to critique something. Let us know. We're still in early access stage. If you can convince us that our understanding of martials are wrong, please do. But, you know, until then, catch you later.